Hello everyone, welcome to this new exciting video. Today we are going to build and train a CNN model for recognizing spoken digits. That's right, an artificial intelligence agent that can hear and recognize digits. This can be used in automating so many tasks in our daily lives, like giving someone your phone number, setting the AC temperature, changing the channel on your TV, and even using it to gain access through security doors. This project is considered to be an easy and a fun entry point to the world of machine learning. So if you are a beginner, then this is the right place to build and sharpen your AI skills. The first step in creating any AI system is gathering and labeling data. In our case, the data is short audio clips of digits we want to recognize. Each one of these clips will be fed to a convolutional neural network, and basically that will create a model capable of successfully recognizing spoken digits. However, these audio clips cannot be fed directly to a convolutional neural network though, because this type of networks expects images as inputs. So instead we are going to convert the audio to something called spectrograms. A spectrogram is a visual representation of the spectrum of frequencies of a signal as it varies with time. When applied to an audio signal like in our case, spectrograms are sometimes called voice prints and that implies that every voice we make have a distinct print and that means that every digit we pronounce have a different look in the spectrogram. Here's an example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can see that every digit is different visually than the others the same as a fingerprint for humans or a nose print for cows. This can be very helpful since we can treat our audio clips as images and this way we can successfully use them to train the CNN model. You can find the many datasets in the web. For example, I found this small dataset of 6000 labeled spoken digits in this GitHub repository. The data seem to be diverse enough for us to use in this project, so let's create a notebook in Google Collab and start coding the project. First of all, we need to import the dataset. We can do this by copying the zip file link from the repository and then using the wget command in the Google Collab notebook. After the file is loaded, we will unzip the dataset using this command. We only need the folder named recordings, so we will grab it and put it outside of its parent folder. We will also create another folder and name it spectrograms. The next step now is to process the audio clips and convert them into spectrograms. So we will create a function for that, but first let's import some important classes and modules. The clips we have now are in the WAV format. So we will define a function called wav to spectrogram that will take the path for each audio clip and the path for the spectrogram output folder that we just created. In addition to this, the function will take some other important parameters namely the spectrogram image size, the number of overlaps and the color scheme. The first line in this function will be reading the audio file using the read method from the important wav python class and then we create a figure and set its size in inches using this simple formula. We then set the axes of the figure this way and turn off the display since we will not show them and finally we add them to the figure. The most important line in this function is this one where the spectrogram is created. We pass the samples and the color map which is grey in our case and that indicates that the resulting image will be in grayscale for saving some space and computing power. We also pass the sampling frequency and the number of points of overlap between blocks 
but don't worry too much about these parameters they don't change too much between applications so if you're going to use this in another project you can usually get away with using the same ones we set the locator for the x and y axes and finally save the figure in the save path now we have a function that converts an audio file to a spectrogram image however our datasets contains 6000 examples and we have to converge each and every one of them if we want to successfully complete this project so we need another function that will use the function we just created to loop over the recordings folder and convert its contents It is time now to create the functions we created above, so we pass the recordings folder path and the output spectrogram path to the dear to spectrogram function like this. The results should be present in this folder like we are seeing right now. The next step now is to make the labels. Each audio clip have a name and that will contain our label. We just need to split the name in these underscore symbols and then we get a list that contains our digit, the name of the performer and lastly the sample number because the same performer will pronounce the same digit more than once. So after we import some useful modules and classes, we declare a variable for the spectrogram directory and two empty lists named train set and test set. And then we loop over the images in the spectrogram folder and split every name at the underscore symbol. The spectrogram image is loaded and appended to one of the lists we declared above along with its label after it's been converted into an array. If the sample number of the image is between 0 and 4, we append it to the test set, else we append it to the train set. This way, we can split the data set into a train set and a test set. The final step in processing the data is to put the images and the label in both of these sets in its separate list, x for images and y for labels. And then we convert each list to a NumPy array. The label list for the train set and the test set will have to be converted into one hot representation, where the correct label is set to 1 and the others to 0. This will allow us to use this representation in training the neural network. We also have to normalize the pixels in the image by dividing them by 255 and by doing this we finished with processing the data which is the hardest part in this project and all we have to do right now is to design the neural network and train it using the data so let's begin we need now to import sequential from keras and also optimizers from layers and we need to import these types of layers for creating our convolutional neural network After setting the shape of the input to 64 by 64 by 1, we will define a function to build a CNN network. We begin by declaring the model using sequential. Our network will have three layers of convolution and batch normalization, which will decrease the image size while preserving the useful information.
and then we add max boolean layer for extracting the useful features in the image which will make the neural network much more efficient. Adding a dropout layer will discard some neurons in the network and that will help reduce overfitting in our model. The next step now is to add a fully connected dense layer of 128 neurons with ReLU activation along with a batch normalization and another dropout layer. After that, we add another dense layer of only 64 neurons this time and similar to the first hidden layer, we add the batch normalization and the dropout layer. The last layer in our neural network is the output dense layer of 10 neurons. This layer have 10 neurons because our goal is to recognize 10 digits from 0 to 9. And by doing that, we finish building the neural network and all we have to do right now is to compile the model specifying the categorical cross entropy loss function, the other delta optimizer and the accuracy metric. In the next cell, we just build the CNN by calling model building function that we have just created. The convolutional neural network is now created, so it's time for starting the training process. The training is done using the fit method that takes the train images and labels we stored in the X train and Y train lists as arguments. We also specify a batch size of 50 and a validation split of 0.2. This will split the training data into 80% training and 20% validation, which will be used in tuning the hyperparameters. The next argument is the epoch number. This one will specify how much time you take for training. Each epoch will take approximately 71 seconds, that means 100 epochs will take about 2 hours of training. To be honest, this seems like a long time, so if you are only doing this to learn machine learning basics and you don't want to waste 2 hours of your life, then you can reduce the number of epochs to your liking. But remember, the resulting model will not be as accurate. When the training is finished, you can save your model in the HDF5 format so you can use it in your own applications. But before that, let's make a quick evaluation of the model using the test data that we saved earlier. 96% accuracy is not excellent number, but if you consider that we only had 6000 examples in our dataset, then this percentage looks acceptable and will do the trick for now. It's time now to actually use this model. I will choose a sample from the test set using this index and then in this line I'll use the predict method. You can see that most of the time the prediction will match the actual sample and this means that our model is ready to be used in real life applications. If the likes on this video reached 1000 then I will absolutely do a real life application with this model. So don't forget to subscribe and activate the notifications so you don't miss that video once I upload it. That being said, I'll see you soon in another video with another idea. Goodbye.